<clears throat> all right, Shalom, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Basham Yahushai, Wahawa Kakodash, double honors to the apostles, a great millstone for teaching and ruling on the scriptures, citations to Yahweh across the world, pushing this word in truth and in sincerity and with charity. And uh, there's just going to be a quick lesson, you know, before I head to the, the slave camp. All right, I'm going to start it with a scripture. All right, because we have uh, things from the past about to make their reappearance, man. Okay? Things that happened in the ancient world. Things that happened during the time of uh, the different kings and different kingdoms. Right before they went down. Okay? Or during the times of war, man. And what I'm speaking on is famine. Alright? That's why you have an engineered famine being set up. But ultimately it is of Yahweh Basham El Shai. Because, like I say all the time, he orchestrates... Every single thing that goes on in this reality, man. Okay, this is Romans. This is Romans chapter 15, verse 4. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Okay? So the things that we read throughout the scriptures in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, because it is based 2,000, all right, based off 2,000 years ago from now, <laughs> so it, it would be the things aforetime. All right, it says, for whatsoever things were written the fourth time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay? So the things written the fourth time were written for our learning, and one of those things written the fourth time was famine. All right, where it's going to come to the point where a lot of you people are going to start seeing things where you're not able to get food. That's why they're slowly, all right, and gradually taking food out of the stores. They just euthanized a great number of cows, gassed a great number of chickens, because what are they doing? It's an engineered famine. And it ultimately, it's Yahweh Basham El Shah. So they're getting rid of your food. All right? It's not going to be food in the stores. And gradually, over time, it's going to be less and less and less until there is no food in the stores for you people. The only people that are going to be able to get food are the people that have wealth, so called. All right? And what are they going to do? Offer you that chip so that you could get some food. Okay, but first and, first and foremost, let me get this account real quick. Because you women, man, with these kids. Alright, you women with these ki all these kids. Alright, you're going to end up eating your kids. Nothing is new under the sun like Ecclesiastes says, man. You people that are not following, falling in line with how about Shemi Al Shai. <laughs> in these last days, you're going to be subject to all of these things written the fourth time because nothing is new on this sun. The Lord's going to bring them back. All right, give me one second. This is 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 25. It says, And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it, the Syrians, until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of doves dung for five pieces of silver. So you're going to be eating a lot of unsavory things due to the fact that there is no food coming into these stores. And that's what's going to eventually be the reality. Okay. Verse 26, and as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there would cry a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answereth this woman, and he an and she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today. Did you just hear that? There was such a terrible famine. The famine was so bad that these women were, it was an agreement to eat each other's children. You see? So you people that think the, the men of the Lord, the prophets out on the highways and byways are telling you lies and are crazy. You're going to be those main ones that experience these situations. That go through these trials, all right, and terrible times, man. For your lack of inquisition on the truth, man. 2 Kings 6 and 28 and the king and 29, excuse me. So, so we boiled 
my son and did eat him. This is in the Bible, by the way, that you people so-called say you believe in. And I said unto her the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall. And the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Then he said, the most high do so and more also to me if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. All right. So that was mainly the point. There was an occurrence of people of women agreeing to eat each other's sons. To the point where one woman hid her son because she didn't want him to eat, be eaten. But she ate the other person, the other woman's son. And that's going to occur again in these last days. Because what does Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says? There's nothing new under the sun. What did Romans 15 and 4 say? The things written aforetime were written for our learning. So we're learning that these things are going to occur once again, man. Okay? Now let's get some more scriptures where the Lord said there's definitely going to be famine. If you bear me one second. All right, this is um, this is the book of Ezekiel. Let's see if I can start off a little bit. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 5, verse 7. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, because ye multiply more than the nations that are round about you and have not walked in my statutes. Israel has become the sand of the sea. But what, what comes with that? They become the most wicked nation on the earth besides Esau, man. Okay? They have surpassed the deeds of the wicked, as the scriptures say, man. You see? Therefore, the Lord is orchestrating these types of things and situations and the brutality of them for you for you two-thirds, man. That's why the videos that Apostle Dahar and Apostle Gabar just made on the two-thirds go right along with this. Because this is going to be one of the judgments for you two-thirds, man. Okay? Eating each other. Eating your son. Because you continuously think this is a joke. And you continuously try to cling to this society, man. But we'll see. Ezekiel 5 and 7. Therefore, thus saith the Lord... Yahweh, because ye multiplied more than the nations that are round about you and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, I, even I, am against thee. The Most High is against you two-thirds, man. And I will execute judgment in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. <laughs> you see? See these niggas out here begging? It's going to get worse. Except stealing, robbing people for food, it's going to get worse. Because why? Because the Most High Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is against thee. And I will do in thee that which I have not done. And whereunto I will not do any more of the like because of all thine abominations. Therefore the Father shall eat the sons in the midst of thee. Is that another cannibalism scripture? Yes it is. And it's in the scriptures. It's in the Holy Bible that you people claim you believe in, man. Therefore, the father shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. So this took place in the past, once again, aforetime. All right, but it's coming back again, man. You see? It's not the end of it. Let me get one more. This is Jeremiah chapter 19. Let's see where I can start here. Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 6. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom. This is in the past, but it's coming back again. But the valley of slaughter. And I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place. So you niggas are going to become baffled with what's going on. To the point where you're going to be completely and utterly destroyed by the Lord, man. He's going to bring evil upon you. And I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hands of them that seek their lives. 
and their carcasses, which means your dead body, will I give to be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beast of the field. I mean, for the beast of the earth, excuse me. So these animals, that's why they're coming into the cities. It says in the, in the last days, the animals shall change their places. Because the Lord is preparing for them a great feast. And you people, you people, you two-thirds, all right, and the heathens of Esau, <laughs> your dead carcasses, it says here, all right, are going to be their dinner and their feast. It says, and their carcasses will I give, this is the Lord, the Lord speaking, thus saith the Lord, and their carcasses will I give to be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And I will make this city desolate and in hissing. Everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and hiss because of all the plagues thereof. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their own sons and the flesh of their daughters. And they shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness. That's what's coming. <laughs> you see? Wherewith their enemies and they... That seek their lives shall straighten them. Then thou shalt break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee and shall say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city as one brick of a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again. So the Lord has enmity with you two thirds, man. You people that come against the prophets, you people that won't get right, you people that won't proclaim your heritage. The Lord got something for you, man. Okay? The Lord has a lot of judgment prepared for you. Okay? This is... I'm going to get this and I'm going to close out here. This is Lamentations. Let's see where I can start here. This is Lamentations chapter 4, verse 9. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. What it's saying is it's better if you get shot and shot to death than starved to death. Because what's ultimately going to happen? You're going to result to cannibalism, which is which I've read in the previous scriptures. <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. It's coming back. That's why there, it's, it's an it's a engineer famine coming, but it's all orchestrated by the Most High. Because Esau's doing it. And Esau is the sword of the Lord. The whooping stick. To whoop you niggas and you whores and you demons and witches, warlocks. All these uh, tough guys out here with guns. The Lord is, the Lord's getting ready to come down on you and start the fuck out of you. Excuse my language. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. Desiring food in a day, smelling food. You know, brother was saying, soon you have to put the meat in your shirt. <laughs> you know, around you niggas, man. You have to put the food in a backpack. We don't have to put shit because the Lord, Yahweh Shai Ratazah, the Lord is going to protect us, feed us, all right, and provide for us. Okay, but you people outside of this truth, man, it's gonna be a wrap for you, man. You have no knowledge of what, no knowledge or understanding of what's going on, so you're gonna be uh, become a casualty of the of the Most High's whooping stick. You see, Lamentations four and ten, and I'm gonna close on that. I don't wanna make it too long. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden. Which means cooked their own children. They, what, what's the they? Their children. They were their meat in their destruction of the daughter of my people. So the Lord is going to put a spirit on you people to eat each other, eat your kids, eat your own flesh, eat your arms, bite off your fingers. Due to what? The famine. Because the Lord is going to take away the stay and staff of bread here in the Babylon the Great for you two thirds. You're not going to make it, man. And as the scripture read, it's better to it's better to be slain with the sword, all right, than to be slain with hunger. Why? Before these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field, which is food, man. All right, so this is what's coming, man. This is something that is read and spoken about in the scriptures, man. And it's a part of the end time prophecy. Call Allah Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kakodash, double honors to the apostles, a great millstone for teaching and ruling well in the scriptures. Salutations to you, Akim, across the world, pushing his word in truth and in sincerity and with charity. Shalom, a Bible ball.